Hey, hello, hi, I'm Ghosty, and welcome back to me, my channel, and welcome back to the Underworld. If you click on the video, then you already know exactly what this video is about, so I'm not going to waste any time. This video is about the Summer Games Fest, and if you're unaware of what this is, it's exactly what it's called. It's a festival where they reveal, announce, and showcase video games that are upcoming and about to release. So, of course, being a gaming thing, of course I was going to be into it, and I was going to be fully invested into, into it, and that's exactly what happened. So now, after watching it, I have all these games to look at and talk about, so I might make different videos going into detail about these games that I, I was interested in, but for this video, I'm just going to go over it and cover what I like the most from this. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Or, actually, before we get into it, if there's a certain game or topic you want to hear me talk about, you can check the description for timestamps, and you could probably see which one you want to hear me talk about just by doing that. And while you're also down there in the description, you might as well subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. Please and thank you. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, let's talk about it and let's get into the actual video. First up, we have Gotham Knights. And in the Summer Games Fest, it showed off Nightwing, probably the best member of the Bat Family, or personally, my favorite. But if you've watched any of my content regarding this game or anything Batman, you know I'm a huge fan and I'm really excited for this game. So you would think I would be really excited to see it, and I love seeing literally anything that they put out. Announcements, reveals, just little showcases like this. It just showed off Nightwing. It's really all this vi like video was that they showed at the fest. It really all it was was showcasing Nightwing, and I loved it. I enjoyed what we got, but it is pretty underwhelming. And let me tell you why. It's not their fault, and it's not WB Montreal's fault. Developers of the game. Also, they you can see some customizations again, just showing off Nightwing. But like I was saying, it's not their fault that I was underwhelmed. The last Gotham Knights like announcement or reveal trailer that we got was a showcase of Nightwing and Red Hood. And it was a gameplay trailer, or a gameplay demo. And the people playing it weren't the very best at the game, and it was just overall not the best gameplay. And a lot of people were talking down on it and talking bad about it. So really, what I was hoping from this, because I knew Gotham Knights was going to show up at some point in this, but I was really hoping for just good gameplay. So... All the haters and people that were talking down on the game could be like counteracted and could be like immediately contradicted. And I just really wanted this like display of good gameplay and to make everyone even more excited for Gotham Knights. And I think that's what everyone should be. I am at least. But I think that is what I wanted. Again, not their fault. It's what I personally wanted, just so it's not talked down as much anymore. And everyone looks at it as a good game and a game to look forward to instead of just talking down on it kind of thing. But we got what we got, and regardless, I love Nightwing. So that's pretty much it for that. So let's look at the next game, which is Marvel's Midnight Suns. And yes, you are looking at Wolverine, Blade, and Ghost Rider. I'm pretty sure we've known about this game for a while now, but now we actually do get the new trailer thanks to the Summer Game Fest. Preach. It is made by 2K, and as you can see, there's a lot of characters. A lot of characters, which you'll see even more later on. Just like, <laughs> as you can see right now, Venom, which I was hyped to see him. He looks really cool. And same with, you know, who else is about to show up. Well, not the villain. Which, by the way, the villain is named Lilith. She's a Doctor Strange villain, I think, in comics. I don't know much about her. I tried to do some research just to find out who she is. But my knowledge on her is not the best. So, the game looks good regardless, though. And I love the graphics, I love how everything's looking, but my issue with it is the gameplay. I do not like the tactical RPG element of it, where you have to place your attacks and you have to time and have like cards and cooldowns and everything like that. I really, oh look there's Spidey, but I really do not like the tactical RPG aspect of it whatsoever at all, really. I wish all games, like superhero games and comic book games, did the thing with Ar what Arkham does and what the Spider-Man games do now. And, well, they just don't. At least, not every game does. Which, I'm glad they don't, like, replicate and just, like, copy and paste the same, like, playing methods over and over again. But at the same time, I think that's the best way to go for this. Especially when we get this huge case of characters w that everyone loves, but we're not able to play, like, to our heart's content. Like, we would be able to if it was, like, 
the Arkham or Spider-Man kind of combat system. And I really do hope that the powers and abilities that we can do make up for the lack of interactivity. Like, we have a lot of freedom and basically we can do anything we want when it comes to playing the, with the combat style of the Arkham games or the Spider-Man games now. So that's what I'm saying and that's what I mean. I wish it was kind of more like that. But it's not, it's a tactical RPG like I said and I'm not the biggest fan of it. But I really do hope that I end up liking it and I really do hope that the attacks and the powers and abilities that we have and are able to use make up for that. So we'll see when it comes out. Also look at the Spider-Man 3 reference. <laughs> Alright, let's move on. Or maybe move backwards because we're about to go back to the vintage age because we got a trailer or a reveal for Cuphead the DLC aka the delicious last course which yes is clever and I point that out all the time when I say it I love it but I extremely love I love 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 this game it's one of my favorite games ever I think and I admire it I finished it I have beat it and I love it I love every second of this game and when I got an like announcement that I was going to get a DLC, I was like extraordinarily happy. I was jumping out of my seat, kind of like little like boy on Christmas happy. But now we're in 2022, and it's been a while, and it seems like it's taken decades to actually finish the DLC. But they have every right to, and I don't blame them because, well, everything looks like it's even much better than it was before. The graphics, the gameplay, the backgrounds, everything looks like it's all even better done but than before. So, we're finally getting the Cuphead in the Delicious Last Chorus. And I cannot wait for it. There's nothing I don't like about it. I'm so excited to play this. And it's most likely going to be ending up on the channel. So, stay tuned for that in June. And we know that now there's a new playable character. We can play as Miss Chalice. There's probably going to be new abilities and new supers. Like we've seen in that little like video. The trailer, whatever it is. Miss Chalice, it, there's like an actual like vertical like super before it was like a horizontal thing with cuphead and mugman now there's one with miss chalice not sure if it's for everyone else but we'll see when it's out i really like that snow dude that's in the trailer also the boss i don't know who doesn't know this yet because i don't think it's come up that much in, on the channel but i my god i am a whore for this stuff i love it so much and that is anything snow or ice themed like frost themed anything with them powers or abilities Literally anything like that I, I, I'm in love with. So of course I'm going to be liking this boss. Everything is made of snow. He's literally like a frost wizard, which I really like. And I'm really interested in saying it. And then of course there's new shots too. I wonder if they're going to have the same shopkeeper. I feel like Pork Ryan was iconic enough to keep. But now they're on like a whole new island, which is pretty cool. Well, that's, oh my god. they have It's Cuphead. They could do so much for a sequel. I'm really interested to see where it goes after the DLC. Because this has been, work been working on for a while. So even if we do get a sequel, it's not going to be for a long while, sadly. But, of course, hopes are still high. At least for right now, though, we're still waiting for the DLC. So, alright, next. Well, actually, before we do get into the next game, I want to show something that isn't even part of the games, but just, just watch it. I cracked up at this, and I shouldn't have been laughing at this this hard, but just watch it. Came with a very special guest who's been in his fair share of video games, including most recently Fortnite as the foundation. Dwayne Johnson. Big drink energy. <laughs> I don't know if it's the eyebrow that gets me, but anytime I ever hear that The Rock is in Fortnite, I don't. It always gives me a smile for some reason. It's just, it's just so like bizarre and out there. Like it would, it's so unexpected that it's funny. I mean, it's surreal. He says, like, this is his, like, way of promoting, like, coming in and promoting, like, Fortnite and also Black Adam. But I already talked about Black Adam in a trailer video. That's already up on the channel if you want to go check that out. But as for this, he says that, you know, talking about Fortnite or whatever, maybe a Black Adam skin in the future for Fort, possibly, I'm not sure. But it's just surreal. But the next game is also surreal. And that is this. If you've seen it already, then you know exactly what it is. But g watching it and first... I had no clue what it was, and I had, didn't really have any guesses. I should have known. I should have known. And the entire time this trailer plays, this guy is doing whatever he's doing. And I knew, for, like, for a fact, in my head, I knew it wasn't going to be about him. He was obviously going to be like oblivious to something going on around him. Or it was like going to like start off with him and focus on something else. 
That's exactly what happened. But, of course, it's done in a very <laughs> special way. Because this is <laughs> a game I didn't even know was coming out. I didn't even know was coming. <laughs> Goat Simulator. And it's not Goat Simulator 2. They just kind of skipped the sequel. And it's called Goat Simulator 3. So, why not? <laughs> Hell yeah, let's have at it. Ghost Simulator is a game I grew up on and I played a lot, like just go like over the years, through school, through any anything really overall. I played it a lot. So seeing it, and this is probably gonna be much more expansive and even like bigger. And I thought the game was big originally. There's a series I'm planning to do on my channel, which I haven't started yet. I've been wanting to for quite some time, and now since we're getting more subs and things like that, I might do, start it soon. But it ha it does. In <laughs> It does include Good Simulator, the first one at least. This one will come when it comes out. But I was so like surprised to see this, and I'm so happy to see it, just because I love and grew up on the first Good Simulator, and it was so like it's such a fun and wacky game, just a bizarre ass game. That's all it is. I remember you had to do like really certain things. You could get like a really buff goat. You can get a satanic goat, a dead mouse goat, a, a whole bunch of like a bunch of stuff. And there's references. Literally every corner in the, in this game. So I'm really interested to see it. And it looks like they didn't change the style of the game too much. Like the art style and like the graphics wise. Obviously it looks better than before. But they didn't change the style. So it looks like old, just normal old Goat Simulator. Which I like. I appreciate that. So that's <laughs> pretty like, that's pretty welcoming. That they didn't really shy away from that. But that's Goat Simulator 3. <laughs> uh, I was wild to see it. And I'm actually surprised by the reveal, but there it is. So, let's move on to the next one. Which is a game I didn't even expect was coming. And I was more than happy to see it. Well, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I didn't even realize this was going to be a thing. I had no idea this was in the making whatsoever. I, much like everyone else at least should, love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And Shredder, Bebop and Rocksteady. Kang, everything along them lines, everything that has to do with TMNT, I'm a fan of. And personally, my favorite turtle, if you couldn't tell by everything else, is Donatello, and I'll be more than happy to play as him when this does release. Look at Splinter, he looks like he's out of an anime. <laughs> he's so badass. So is Shredder though, and so is everyone else that they show off. See, I was really interested in this. Oh, what's his name? Was it Dr. Baxter? I think it was, the fly. Uh, it looks really cool. They, they nailed the style of the turtles and that like original like cartoon style that they always have. I think they nailed it. Shredder's Revenge. This is a turning point for me because I really look and I enjoy that like I appreciate that we're getting a TMNT game, but I didn't know what to expect and I did not know it was going to be a side-scrolling kind of like arcade game sort of game. I'm gonna get it regardless, but I was. I'm sorry to keep bringing this up, but the Arkham and Spider Man games, like combat systems, are like flawless and they're really well done. And when they, I heard, or when I saw the verse that it was a Turtles game, I was kind of hoping for that, like a third person kind of like open world kind of game with Turtles, because that would have been awesome. But regardless, I'm glad we're getting a game, and maybe this will push them to make other games if it does well afterwards. So we'll have to see when it's out. But it's a Team NT game, and I'm a fan of it. It is, like I said, kind of disappointing, but that has absolutely nothing to do with them, and that's more on me and what I wanted, and what I wanted to see. Which is fine, though. I don't. It's not the biggest issue ever. I'm still going to get it, I'm probably going to enjoy the hell out of it. It's a Team NT game. <laughs> Why not? And we haven't even gotten that much new Team NT stuff outside of comics, so of course I'm going to be interested in it. So, Shutter's Revenge, coming <laughs> whenever that release date was. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Also, I have to add that the song, as always, is a banger. <laughs> they don't, they never fail to bring in the music that brings the same vibe as the Turtles do, and just all together is a banger song. And also, it's pretty fitting that I said that Splinter looks like he's out of an anime, because the next thing is all about anime. If you've seen the Summer Game Fest, you already know what it is. I haven't touched on anime at all, really, I don't think, in the channel so far. So this is basically the introduction. So, <laughs> let's dive deep down into it. <laughs> let's go. Which, <laughs> which you can tell by already that it is One Piece. And One Piece is by far 
probably one of my favorite anime. It's not my favorite anime. It's tied between that and Death Note. I praise them so highly, and I like both of them. But look at this game. Look at look at the straw hats. Oh my god, the world of One Piece is going to be in a phone game. I know they already have games, but this is a new one, and I think it is this. I think it is an else world story kind of thing. Anyone has been up to, bus to some business. I don't know what that's about, but I want it to be, and I think it's going to be a different story, a whole different like kind of thing, an adventure solely in the game, and it's only canon in the game. I don't know if what like we don't know what's going to happen. And what's going to be canon in the game and in not with not? It seems like everything before time skip has been like uh, happening because they all have the post time skip designs, and everyone is there, but not Jinbei. So it takes place before some events. So I'm not sure, but look at everyone! Oh my god! <laughs> and you can play all of them. I cannot wait for this. And my god, I'm gonna gush over this real quick. <laughs> Man, the graphics and the style that they have is literally perfect it looks so goddamn good and i love it and it even like, is not only in cutscenes like it, it looks the same in the gameplay as well which is amazing i think it looks absolutely phenomenal and as you can see look <laughs> at brooks soul well as you can see there's like a whole adventure that's set in this continuity of just the game alone and obviously it's not canon to like the regular story much like how the movies are, how the actual existing One Piece movies are. So maybe it is like that, and it's going to stay like that, but I'm not sure. But my god, I cannot wait for this game, and it looks really, really promising. Honestly, I might just make a video on this game alone and just like dive deep into it, and get into what I want or what I want to expect or what I hope for. So maybe I will. And I kind of want a video talking about One Piece in general, because it's not up yet. But like I said, this game is very promising. And I'm not going to get too deep into it. <laughs> I'm just going to wait for that video, I guess. But man, it just looks really promising. And like I said, I want and I think that it's going to be a story and adventure solely set in its own continuity of the game, much like the movies are. So I think it is actually ending up being like that. So I'm really excited for it. And whew, those are my most wanted games and what I was most interested in. Which honestly, want the One Piece Odyssey, like this game that I'm talking about right now, is the biggest takeaway that I got from this. This is the biggest game that I've like I'm actually interested in. I'm not as interested in this game as I am in Gotham Knights, but from what we got from the Summer Games Fest, this without a doubt took the cake and went beyond and like way over anything else that we've gotten and that I, that I saw. I cannot wait for this and it again looks really promising. I'll probably make a video on that, so stay tuned for that. And there we have it. Those at least are my most wanted games. The Summer Games Fest is getting a lot of like mixed uh, signals from the fan base and just community all around in gaming genre and just all around the gaming community. So some people liking it, some people not. Obviously, those are things I do like and other things I want to point out just to talk about it real quick or point out and just say it out loud and make it present that I like it and I'm interested in it. But those things I already talked about are my most wanted things and the things I was most interested in. But now here are some like honorable mentions that... Don't really make don't really make it as much as they do, but it was still cool to see it, and I'm still interested in some aspects. And maybe if I get interested in it more down the line, maybe I'll play it. But here they are. Starting off with Aliens: Dark Descent. I think the horror games that they showed off at the fest really did shine, and it's not only in Aliens that it showed, but in pretty much, but mostly all of the horror games that they showed off in this really do nail that like scary and actual legitimate creepy atmosphere and nature to a T which isn't very like surprisingly not that easy to the horror genre in gaming as a whole that's why some fail that's why some are looked at as you know not much of a scary game so but in this I think they do it pretty well and then we have this the Callisto Protocol which this really amped the horror up even more same with the next game this looks really cool. The tech and gadgets that are used are really pretty unique. I mean, maybe not unique, because, I mean, there's so much in fiction that you could do, but it, it's like a lot of it's been done before. But in this, it looks like it's used in a unique way, and I really like it. And I'm interested in seeing more of this game. And even right after I said the Kaliso Protocol did an even better job at the whole horror thing, and just overall looks like a better game and has more potential than the Aliens game does. Because the Aliens game, we already know what the Xenomorphs are. We've seen so much of Aliens. So the Clisto Protocol looks really interesting, and I am interested in it. 
But this cranks it up even further and up a notch even more. And this is called Routine. And this is, <laughs> oh, this looks really cool. It's a sci-fi horror, and they didn't even show that much of it, but it doesn't take much to amaze me, or at least get my interest and catch my eye. So, here I am, and I thought it was looked pretty cool. And I'm interested in seeing more and this, like, world that they're building in this game. And next up is The Quarry, which <laughs> I'm so, so sorry that everything's been horror game so far in this, like, honorable mention part of the video so far. But like I said... I think the horror games do shine outside of the things that I found myself looking forward to the most like, that I already talked about. And this didn't catch my interest at first. Well, I mean, obviously, I was watching everything pretty much. But this caught my interest solely because of the whole vibe it's giving and the whole, like, setting. And having, like, an old-timey, like, camp and, like, summer camp kind of vibe. Like, Friday the 13th kind of stuff. And it's a choice-based game. A lot like Until Dawn. So, the choices you make throughout the story actually change the story and the outcomes. So, much like Until Dawn, I'm interested in seeing how things plan out. And then finally wrapping up the horror genre from the fest, Layers of Fear. I told you there's so many, but they're big games and I had to point them out and talk about them, so here I am. I think this and Routine come my interest the most. This is very, like, psychological and it <laughs> seems very nightmarish with a lot of like supernatural things going on that doesn't seem like it could be real but also could not be real I don't have much experience with Layers of Fear and the series I, I'm, I'm aware that it's a series of games I'm not sure what this, this is maybe a remake maybe like a reboot I'm not sure but it's still part of the series and it's still part of that like franchise so here we are and when it's not in that trippy like nightmarish kind of setting it's in a very gothic place and like the mansion that they're going around in looks really like Vintage and like, like I said, it's gothic, which I really like. I'm a fan of that, and everything pretty much like come interest in this. It's it's like you're on the edge of the seat the whole time. It actually seems like it actually is <laughs> like the name is worthy of being layers of fear, and everything that it does, it captures the nature and the atmosphere most. I think out of everything else that they showed, so they basically know what they're doing. Uh, again, it is a series, so I'm not surprised, but this trailer really did catch that like that grip of horror and actual fear. And then finally getting out of the horror genre, we have Neon White as a second to last honorable mention that I wanted to point out. And it looks pretty cool. It's a platforming, like first person shooter kind of game with a pretty unique style and their designs are sick. I like them a lot. Especially that one person in the front, that suit, the all black and white, just looks absolutely sick. But it is very fast paced and it looks pretty interesting. The enemies, the combat looks all cool. Again, it's a first-person shooter, so we're all used, kind of used to it by now. But overall, it looks cool. And I'm kind of interested in the story as well. And I just want to see where it goes off. And then lastly, the game I wanted to point out, High Water. It's a like strategical kind of survival with the whole world being flooded and like a big like, climate apocalypse going on, basically. And I really wanted to point it out because I'm not sure where they could take it. It seems interesting and could be good and very fun if used correctly. They just, we just need to see how they execute it and how that story and game actually plays out. Plus, I can't talk about this game without mentioning the style and look of it, which I think is really, really neat. And I love games that look like that. A lot of games had that kind of style, and this one pretty much nails it. And there we have it. The biggest takeaways, personally, to me, from the Summer Game Fest. My most wanted games, as you saw before. And then the honorable mentions that I wanted to talk about and just shed light on and bring it up. So there you have it. Please, please, please feel free to comment or reach out to me or any way, shape or form, and just let me know what you think and your feedback on either the Summer Game Fest or this video. And of course, criticisms and just overall thoughts as well. But that's all for me and for this video. So I appreciate it greatly. Thank you for watching this. Subscribe, like, comment, share, etc, etc, all that stuff. And that's pretty much it. This has been Ghosty, and well, I bid you all farewell.